So I have a special guest on the James Arnold Taylor podcast, the Jatcast today, and it is my daughter, Lydia Rose Hello. Taylor. LRT, Lert, not Jat. You're alert. Alert. You are alert. You're the most alert 15-year-old I know. Well, thank you. I was raised right. Oh, okay. I'll pay you later for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lydia. Yes. Um, well, first off, st- uh, step up to that microphone. You good? You'd get, yeah. Hello. 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 Is that how you do it? <laughs> right? Hello? No, no. Hey, hey, Lydia. No, you're going to. Hello, 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 hello. Right. Hello, 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 hello. Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I see. She's better than you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. What? I'm just saying. Well, no, I can't argue with that. Okay. Well, then there you go. All right. Can you leave, Hank? Jeez. Bye, Lydia. Mr. Hank. Bye, Miss Lydia, darling, sweet girl. He's so sweet. He's not sweet. Yeah. No, you know who's sweet is Mr. Announcer Guy. He's your favorite, isn't he? Yes, he is. Mr. Announcer Guy. Hello, Lydia. Hi, Mr. Announcer Guy. How are you? Good. You're tall. You got taller. I got taller, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you ready to help me introduce the show? Sure. What do you want me to do? You're going to say, oh. cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. Cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. You got it, Lydia. <laughs> See, that was good. Now, the best. Uh, okay, now, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time for the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, talking to myself, the Jackcast. And now, here he is with a very special guest, the one and only Lydia Rose Taylor, with the guy that's doing all the voices, including this one. Say it with me, James Arnold Taylor! Wow, that was the best intro ever. <laughs> for this podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Um, Special guest, uh, extremely special, the most special guest I've ever had on this show. Uh, My daughter, Lydia Rose Taylor, who is um, known in her own right as an actress. You've been on If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. You Mm -hmm. star in the upcoming movie Animal Crackers, animated uh, film Animal Crackers. I'm excited about that. With John Krasinski and Emily Blunt playing your parents, and I play your great uncle. Wow. Isn't that weird? A little bit. You knew I was old, but you didn't know I was that old. Ah, he's hiding it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, everybody, the reason we're doing this is because we just had uh, dinner and we had a conversation. We had a tough conversation because, I'll be honest, sometimes I'm not the greatest dad in the world. And sometimes I uh, try too hard or don't try hard enough. And we got into a little argument at the dinner table and I raised my voice and then I do my best to apologize but um well he had a good right well we both were frustrated because of what's going on in the world right now and i i want to bring this up and I, I asked lydia if she could come on the show and talk about it because i want you all to know this is normal and this is going on so you know we were both pushing each other's buttons wouldn't you say lydia definitely yeah so it just escalated and then it turns into a fight and in this family, we always have have always fought and then made up. My and point. Pray. I was raised right. <laughs> and we pray and we ask for forgiveness of each other. And whoever's wrong, you know, admits they're wrong. And usually both sides are wrong. So we both apologize for our parts. And so we did all that. But then some emotions came up as well. You know, there's fear and there's... there's um, There's a lot of anger and hate and disunity going on in the world right now on top of what we've already been dealing with for three months of this virus. And it's created tension in families, good families like yours and mine. And I don't want to hide anything from you all. And I want to share with you how we get through these things. But Lydia, you you were able to express your feelings of why it's been hard for you and would you mind would you feel comfortable sharing with everybody what you shared at the table absolutely yeah should i just start yeah okay then for me personally i'm a pretty happy person i like to be happy i like to focus on the positive side of life so there's been a there hasn't been a lot of positive sides to look at lately and i've been trying my best to stay with that and I do my best when during quarantine, I know some people just don't get dressed and just like, you know what, 
whatever. I do my best to make a point to get dressed every day, to have a reason to get dressed, because for me, that just keeps me with a purpose. It makes me feel like I know what I'm doing with my life, whether or not that is true, that is a lie that is necessary to tell yourself. Um, and it gives me a reason to get out of bed each afternoon or morning, you know. We don't, we don't we talk. We sleep in in this house, that's mm-hmm. okay, but we go to sleep late, so yeah. yeah. Especially in the summer. Very true. Well, I feel like as someone who does my best to look for the best in people, and as someone who does my best to, and I was raised to look for the best in people and to believe the best in humanity. Um, in the beginning, I didn't look at a lot of the news. You know, we're not a family that usually watches no, the news. No, we've never been because we are a positive family. <laughs> and and yeah, it's it's hard to look at sometimes, but it's it's felt necessary right now with the craziness that is going on in the world to keep ourselves abreast of it. So yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, please. Um, the news I look at are fashion blogs and celebrities and royalty. And billboard. And billboard. Music. Yes, definitely music. But each of those platforms began talking about the stuff that was going on more and more. And my parents began watching the news each night just to keep up, not religiously but just like to figure out what's going on in this world and one night I joined them and I think I was just kind of shocked at everything that was happening I knew it was bad obviously and I knew that there was a lot going on but um I was just I was shocked that that we come that far I guess or we dropped that far I'm not sure what the right phrase there would be well said and it's very important to see what's going on around us as well just yeah. to know i think it took me a couple days maybe of watching a little bit of the news and also of like recovering from that shock and then i'm obviously aware of it after that i started keeping up more on the written side of things so like i would read the news more than watch it yeah but i also started getting together with a lot of friends today i had uh, um, I went to the park with a friend, and this week alone, I have been booked every single day. Yes, your schedule is a lot more booked than mine <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm lucky. A lot of my friends and I have just been able to hang out at parks and get a Starbucks. Which and... is great. Which is important and great. Yeah, because it's also, it's summertime now. And that's yep. normally your summertime would be at the beach right now mm-hmm. with friends and going to the mall and ah. hanging out. <laughs> she <laughs> loves the mall. And and just being kids because heaven forbid, heaven forbid sides of this political people and all the people that are supposedly grown ups <laughs> in this planet allow kids to be kids right now in, in our country. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No. Um, no, that's good. That's very, very true. I got, um, where was I? I'm sorry. You were uh, at the park. Right, yeah. I go to the park a lot with friends just because, you know, it's fun. And usually you see people walking their dogs. I go on hiking trails with friends and you see people hiking and the view. And it's all it's all very lovely. And like I said before, I'm someone who likes to look at the positive side of life and look for the best in humanity. And I just, today I think I realized looking around at people... And stuff. I, I'm, I know stranger danger, you know. You not you got to be careful around people. Sure. You don't just say, hi, I'm Lydia. Can oh. I have your phone number? Oh, let's hang out. Like, that's not what you do. Right. Although you usually, as a little <laughs> kid, would go, hi, I'm Lydia. <laughs> to everybody when we were around together. Yes. yes. Well, with the family, yes. you know. But like with friends, me and my friends, we keep to ourselves. If we pass someone, we say hi, you know. Sometimes we'll have small talk with random strangers yeah, but... beautiful day oh is it nice oh look at this you're on the trail oh that's great can be careful all right watch yeah. out for rattlesnakes yeah oh very very true i found myself today even yesterday just over the course of this week i found myself putting my hand in my back pocket where my phone is when i'm talking with a stranger or like almost like scanning them i don't know how to say that I'm sure that's stupid, but like the trust is is waning in a in a world where you're at a park, yeah, and now all of a sudden 
Yeah. Uh, we're we're scared of each other rather than yeah. Instantly going, "Hey neighbor, we're all now so used to putting our guard up, making sure we're safe, and creating these new reflexes in our brains that yeah. perhaps things aren't as safe as we thought." Yeah. And I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't think that's I don't think that's a great idea for humanity. Yeah, it just kind of hit today that I was like I feel like I'm losing my hope in humanity, mm. which just kind of discourages me. Right. Because I feel like humanity can turn this around and I feel like humanity can come back from this. I believe that. Of course. But it's getting harder to believe that. And I think that's the big difference that I talk to my dad with a lot. But the difference between believing and knowing. Sometimes when you know something is the truth versus when you believe it's the truth. I know the best in humanity, but I'm having a lot of trouble believing in it right now. And that's been hard. That's been a hard realization to come to. You pulled at my heartstrings at the dinner table. Hmm. You, you know, you've been much more... Um, composed. Reserved, composed, thank you. <laughs> well, you. You came with the word, I didn't. Shows you how smart she is. She thinks for herself, everybody, please. Uh, you're much more composed now than when we had the conversation at the table. <laughs> but I'm just rephrasing what I already said. But it's because it's real. Everybody, it's real. Um, the feelings are real that kids are having, that your kids are having, that you may be having if you're a kid. I know a lot of kids your age, Lydia, listen to this show. Hmm. Can't and, imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. And I think it's important. So, like, what would you say to people your age about what's going on? The uncommon opinion. Um, talk to your parents. And I know most kids, I believe me, I feel that when you don't want to talk to your parents, I suggest it. I have a good relationship with my parents and it helps me. Even if it takes a trigger for you to break down and talk to your parents, not speaking from experience, <laughs> um, but it is, it'll help. And if, if you don't feel comfortable or if you don't, if you just don't have a good relationship with your parents, I'm sorry, but... I journal, and that helps me a lot, too. Um, you've never seen a page of my journal, have you, no. Daddy? <laughs> well, blank ones. And blank uh, ones. When you, before, when, you're, <laughs> that is when, you, when I walk in and then you flip it to a blank page and say, yes, and look at me, <laughs> and I say, dinner's ready, and you say, I'll be down in a minute. And that is the only page that they yes, will ever I, that's see right. of that's my right. journal. So if you're not a journalist... J yeah, I mean, if that's... You, if you don't journal. Yeah, if you don't journal. You're a journalist, yes. <laughs> you can journal. Journaling is extremely helpful for me um, to get uh, emotions out. But... Yeah, we have enough journalists in the world right now. <laughs> Quote, unquote, journalists. <laughs> get it out however you can. You know, art. I have a lot of friends who get it out artistically. Music, singing. Music. Total yeah. outlet for me. Dance. Dance. Exercise, sports, mm -hmm. sometimes video games. We don't play a lot of video games, do we? We don't. You would think in this family that I would have grown up on video games. Yeah. I grew up on Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> we have a Pac-Man machine. I've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. So rather than see, again, what we do, the deal we have in this family is mm -hmm. we don't then just... Someone may be mad enough to walk away, but we always come back and we always talk it out to the end and it usually ends up being that there was something that was as you said before a trigger isn't it mm -hmm. where as again we both are just dealing with i i've been on the phone with people all day today you know and talking people off of off of cliffs basically you know yeah. people that are upset people that are in this business that are worried that that you know they're not going to work again and it's it's not cool what's going on and so we're all stressed out and then you just want to go to the park, just see your friend, and then and say hi to strangers <laughs> in in the right way. I know yeah. that sounds silly, but say hi to the the families walking by, or another kid going by, or the guy walking his dog, and oh, that's cute, you know, or whatever. Yeah, because that's what happens in neighborhoods and in the world. Exactly, in neighborhoods everywhere, in places everywhere, in cities everywhere. So talking out those things, that's what you recommend to kids. Mm hmm. Definitely. It's, you know, I didn't know I had these feelings earlier this week. If you asked me 
three hours ago, I would have said, "Oh, I'm fine. You know, this, the world is crazy around me, but I am managing to stay busy. I'm happy. That is, you read through my text. That is what I'm telling all of my friends." But I, I kind of realized there was a trigger tonight at the dinner table, and I just, I'm scared. I'm scared for this world. I'm scared where we're going. I'm scared what's gonna happen.、Um, I don't know what's gonna happen, and I'm not a control freak. I just freak out if I'm not in control. <laughs> and okay. And I don't know. I, it scares me to not know what's gonna happen. Right. And you know that's not a political view. That's a human view, right? I would say so. This is real. What's happening in the world is real, and what we're talking about is real. And my、um, personal policy on politics, <laughs> personal policy on politics. PPP. <laughs> I don't.、Um, I don't talk about politics if I don't believe or if I don't have all the facts. I like. I like to know both sides. You know. Yeah. I like to have as many of the facts as I can.、Um, That's kind of important, isn't it? What if the facts aren't what you believe in, or want to believe in, or feel? Should you be looking for the facts, the real facts, or should you just be listening to what somebody said, or what was said on YouTube, or what was said,、uh, you know, by a friend in a text, or on a video, or a TikTok thing? Or <laughs> you look for the real facts. If someone says something like all those examples that you had just said, that'll get me thinking. But I'm not going to go into a debate with a friend off of that. So how do you get real facts these days?、Um, you talk to people around you for opinions. You you listen to what other people believe. You listen to what makes sense. A lot of people sometimes will just contradict themselves while telling you what they believe is solid truth.、Mm-hmm. Um, and you ask people questions. Yeah. You know, if someone does make a contradiction, you're just like, "Hey, so tell me about that." You know, and、yeah. you. You try to get the facts from personal opinions,、um, but then you also need to go to sources. So you go to more than one source. You don't go to just the source that you like to hear. Correct. Correct.、Because、very, that, very true. That goes to the saying of what do I say on this show? No more than you want to know, right? And what does that mean? It means don't just take the sides of things that you like and make you feel good. And that's what's <laughs> important to remember here. In a world of cancel culture and all of that,、yeah. the truth is the truth, no matter if you're present or not, no matter which side you're on. Truth will always stand on its own merit. I don't get cancel culture. No, I get it, but it just doesn't. I don't know. I hate it. I'm not on social media, but all my friends are, so you know I keep up. So, to all of those kids that are like, my parents won't let me be on social media and everything, and it, I'm, all my friends are and everything. What do you have to say to them? I feel your pain. <laughs> oh, really? But what? But honestly,、um, how do you deal with it? I didn't get a phone until I was thirteen. After my first Nutcracker rehearsal, and I was very excited. Well, let's explain. You're a ballerina. Oh, right. I'm a dancer. And you were in the Nutcracker. In the, it was not my first Nutcracker, but it was the first rehearsal of that year for the annual Nutcracker. Yes. Um, and I got in the car, and they gave me a phone, and I was so excited. And the reason that they gave me the phone was because I never asked for it. That's what they told me. Yeah. They said I never asked for it. I never begged for it. I just I trusted them. And in hindsight. And, and you did talk about how all your friends had them, and sometimes、yeah. it was hard. Definitely. Yeah. Um. In hindsight. I'm grateful that I didn't get my phone right away because I look at some of my friends and they're on their phones a lot, and I want to、um, just I don't I'm glad I'm not like that. I'm glad that I'm able to like make that difference. It's a hard difference to make, you know, but it's one that I'm able to make when I I'm able to make it. Yeah.、Uh, and in answer to your question, yeah,、um, I feel like in hindsight. When I am older, I will be glad that I didn't get social media right away, because then I will be able to make that difference. And social media, you know, it's a toxic place. You hear everyone say it. Yeah. It's something they say, <laughs> whether or not they mean it, but it's true. You know, and it's. I would be really happy if everybody in the United States decided for a week to get off 
of social media. Yeah. And see what happens. Like actually, and have the social media companies agree to shut down for a week. So we all could maybe calm down. We wouldn't know what to do. Go inward. Look at also just our own neighborhoods. And it would give everybody a chance to stop. Yeah. I think it would probably be one of the more healthy things for our country right now to go, we're all going to take a fast. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, Take a fast from social media for a week. And even the creators of it agree to it. And we all agree to disagree agreeably and go, this is going to help us. But until uh, people decide that they actually want this country to be better, uh, it's not going to get better. Yeah. And that kind of stinks, doesn't it? Definitely. I feel like personally, people just need to stop. Like you're saying, I went on a hike with a friend the other day and we went up really high in the hills and you could look out and you saw all of these places. You saw both freeways, you saw the lake, you saw everything. And we are so tiny. <laughs> this world is so big and we are so tiny, but we are screaming. And you know... When you scream, it doesn't mean that you're heard. It means that you are adding to the noise of everything. And when you're in it, you feel like you're on top of the world, you know? But you're not. This world is so small. We are so small in comparison to God, in comparison to... There's nothing I can say after God. The galaxy? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) The galaxy. Yeah, the planets, the galaxy, the Milky Way. Yeah. Like, I think everyone just wants to be heard. And social media is the place to do that, right? But face-to-face communication, going to the park with a friend, having a talk at a dinner table, those are real people next to you that you know. Yeah. Like, celebrities, you think you know them, right? Because you listen to their podcast or you (laughs) watch their Instagram TikTok videos or Instagram posts. There we go. Yeah. Um. But you only know however much they want you to know. Yeah. I, I can't say the same for here. I feel like my dad is pretty transparent with you guys because mm. he cares about you guys. He really, he really, really does. I love watching it. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about like when we went to the Rise of Skywalker mm. premiere. It was one of the most inspirational moments for me as a daughter. I felt so proud of him because I watched him. I'm getting (laughs) teary-eyed. I watched him um, with the fans, and he genuinely just cares about you guys. That's very nice of you to say. And you got to spend many years, uh, six six of the seven years I did Star Wars Weekends, you got to do six of those with me. Good old days. Good old days of (laughs) Star Wars Weekends, back when the world all, everybody liked each other. Right. And um, Star Wars was uh, still Star Wars and... uh, Mm -hmm. Everything was, and Clone Wars was on the air every weekend. And yeah, a different time and a different place and a different space. Uh, the world has changed a lot in uh, the 15 years that you've been alive. Oh, that is true. What are you, what, what are your dreams and goals, Lydia Rose Taylor? Uh, uh, everyone asks me that. Yeah. When I was little, uh-huh. I knew I wanted to be a mom. That was my one dream in life. Yeah, I wanted, and you to, wanted be to be a have, mom. What would you tell? I them? wanted to have millions and millions of kids. <laughs> until I found out that giving birth was painful. <laughs> um, but there's adoption, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be a forensic forensic scientist. That's I right. wanted to be a fashion designer. I wanted to be a waitress. A writer. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to be so many different things. All the phases that I went through, you know, when you go through phases, you know this as a kid, you know this as an adult, you know, you go through phases. And all of those phases, you can't just leave them in the past. They're a part of you. They're a part of your past. Mm -hmm. But you take them and they're a part of you. So I don't know where my life is leading me, you know? I don't have a college I want to go to. I don't have a career I want to pursue. But as long as I get to be with people, I'm a people person. And... I always say that I want to work with people in whatever I do. So if that's still a thing, working with people, I would like to do that. Well, I asked you like what you want to be and do and stuff because I knew pretty much the answer because we've talked Mm -hmm. about this. But I also wanted people to see that that's okay. Mm -hmm. When you're 15, you don't need to know everything. But I do know that uh, 
you know, you want to talk to people and stuff. And I want I want a world where you actually can talk to people hmm. and be able to interact and do whatever it is you want to do. You know, we've talked about ministry. We've talked about uh, um, uh, fashion. <laughs> uh, we've talked about, uh, oh, uh, hospitality. Hospitality. Uh, working in that type of industry. Writing, dancing, pretty much anything but acting. <laughs> yeah, which is okay. And And so let me ask you that. Why? Why no acting? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I get I get texts from friends asking like, "Hey, I want to be a voice actor. Where do I start?" You know, uh, it's it's something I've done, and it's fun, and I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had. Um, it's just, I don't know. I'm a talkative person, but I don't feel like I get enough of an expression. I'm not satisfied with the expression of using my voice. Yeah, that's great. I guess I love that you know that. And I'm never going to push it on you, but I think it is pretty cool that the rest of your life and when you get married and you have little kids and all that, you can go, that's me. That's my yes. on a cartoon on if you give a mouse a cookie or uh, in the movie uh, Animal Crackers that's coming out soon. It's a bragging point. <laughs> and you get to hear your voice too, a little. Weird. <laughs> Weird. You have a little voice. I started um, my work on Animal Crackers when I was seven. Yep. Finished it when I was 14 uh, no, 11. No, it's no. 12, somewhere in there. I can't <laughs> remember. Yeah. like that. Yeah, um, it, it was that, and that was an unusual project in that. Yeah. But, um, and but, our dear friend Scott, Christian Sava, who created it and all, he's had a heck of a time getting that thing out there, but it's finally going to be out there. Well, Lydia, I thank you for coming on. Will you come back? Thanks for having me. Talk Anytime. Sometime? Anytime. And you want to choose topics and uh, talk about? I think my uh, audience would like to hear from you. If so, then I would be honored to be here. Okay. You think about it and other topics, and then we'll talk about them, okay? Okay. I love you, kiddo. I love you too, Daddy. All right. And there she goes, my little Lydia Rose. Well, she's not little anymore, but she is my Lydia Rose. Lydia Rose Taylor, my daughter, star of the upcoming film Animal Crackers, coming to Netflix July 24th, two days after my birthday. It's a nice birthday present. Please, no gifts. No gifts. Um, (laughs) Can't believe this year has just flown by. It feels like it was just a moment ago that I was turning 50. I will be turning 51 in less than a month from now. Oh, and it's a month. uh, Today I'm recording this. It's 624. Now, Lydia's interview, I'll be honest with you, we recorded that a couple weeks ago. I'll be honest with you, I have recorded uh, probably six or seven various versions of this show and this episode and different episodes since the last episode that aired and each one of them I go I can't put that out I can't put that out I can't put that out even my conversation with Lydia I'll I'll tell you I had to edit things out sorry but I did we don't live in a world where we can actually just speak our minds anymore and that's sad this outro to that interview I've had to record this is the third or fourth time I've had to do this because I, I think I'm just going to go, you know what, I'll just go off and I'll talk about animal crackers and Lydia and all this nice stuff. And I get frustrated, everybody. Look, I am frustrated. I'm in my little padded room talking to myself. It goes out to you and I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated with the state of the world. Here's the thing. You don't have to watch the news every night, okay? You don't have to be on social media. Look, Don't get your news from social media, by the way. Please do not get your news from social media. Wrong place. Wrong place for it. Watch several different news. Don't just watch one. Because that's how you learn, as I said, no more than you want to know. Know what you believe and why you believe it. And be willing to be wrong. So you got to be able to watch all sources and then discern the truth. We all have a meter in us of truth, right? Don't let your feelings overrun your truth meter. That's another thing. Feelings are one thing. Truths are another. Truth is truth no matter what, as I said before, whether we're in the room or not. You know, the, the old saying of, does a tree fall in the woods? Does it make a noise? Yes, it, it, it makes a noise no matter what. So that's a truth. So truth is truth no matter what. Believe that, know that see that, be willing to be wrong in that, be willing to listen to other opinions, be willing to debate other opinions and discuss with people rather than just say, nope, this is it. This is how we're doing it. 
Anyways, there you go. That's James on his soapbox. Let me jump to the emails. There's been some lovely emails I've gotten from so many of you. Uh, this one's from Micah in Delaware. It says, thank you so much for everything you do. You have truly been an ambassador of inspiration for me in my life over the last few weeks. I've started listening to the Jackcast and watching your YouTube channel. Well, thank you so much, Micah. To say it simply, the last few years of my life have been falling apart in one way or another. I had completely lost faith in God and many things in life. I even became an atheist for a time, but now since I have been hearing your story and testimonies, my life has been changing and I am the beginning I am on the beginning, rather, of my journey back to God and my path slash story that is laid out for me. God has truly spoken to me through your podcast. Micah, that, that does my heart so good to hear. Micah continues, To best frame my question, I have been smoking and or vaping for the last few years, and now I truly want to quit. It's a horrible addiction that will stand in my way of many things. Being a father to my three-year-old son, being healthy and pursuing my dreams of becoming a voice actor to bring joy to as many people as I can, just to name a few. Any advice, thoughts, and prayers you could give me would be such a blessing. Thank you, and God bless you and all that you do, brother, Micah. And again, I hold last names here, so but Micah left his last name. Thank you. Micah, your, your, um, your email is tremendous. I thank you for it. Um, smoking, let's talk about smoking for a minute. And then I want to do something and that, you know, all of you that, that aren't Christian may think it's weird, but I hope it just is, is a, um, a fly in the wall, a window into, uh, another person's life. Cause I'm going to pray for Micah the way I would if Micah was standing right next to me, but, uh, smoking and vaping. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's bad stuff. Okay. I mean, I can tell you. From somebody that has personally been affected by smoking. You know, my wife cannot have children because her mother smoked while she was pregnant with her. My wife uh, um, suffers from a thing called premature ovarian failure. So, you know, and she's okay with me talking about that. Smoking's bad news to everybody. It really is. And vaping is as well. The chemicals and the drugs uh, that are a part of that, it's all, it's all bad news. It's just not good for your body. And if you want to be a voice actor, it's certainly not going to help your voice. Um, but if you, you're a parent, it's really not, it's not good for kids to be around. I was, I lived in a house uh, where my mom smoked for probably the first, well, gosh, I don't know, 15, 16 years of my life. And then people around me and I had a, a writing partner that smoked for years. I was around smoking for years and it, it absolutely affects you. And now, uh, after being exposed to black toxic mold years ago where I got sick and lost my voice, I'm very sensitive to different chemicals and um, things. And smoke is one of them. We have a next door neighbor who we love. She's a wonderful person, but she smokes. And we have to rush up and close the windows and everything because it will put me into a coughing fit and affect my lungs uh, so, so badly now because I, I, you know, I had pneumonia years ago and my lungs have never been the same. And so whenever I'm around smoking, it really affects me. And that's, and it really affects my wife and um, it affects many people. It doesn't affect everybody that way. I get it. But you become used to things. But here's the thing, Micah, you, you want to stop. That's the good news. You want to stop. Uh, so with wanting to stop, that's your first step. That's our first step in everything acknowledging a problem, acknowledging an issue in our lives, acknowledging something that we want to change and then wanting to change it. Here's the beautiful thing. The God I serve can take away addiction. He can take away desires and, and things that we are. People think that once you become a Christian, you're just going to become like, you know, this goody two shoe that sits around doing nothing and, and that, you, you know, a lot of people go, I don't want to become a Christian. I don't want to be convicted of the things that I do that I know are wrong. I know they're wrong, but I don't want to be convicted of that. Here's the beautiful part about God, how he works. He doesn't, doesn't do that. He works on your heart throughout time. And he slowly shows you the, the, the beauty of life without things that we currently are addicted to or, or like 
or, you know, do that aren't the best for us. So he just, he's a subtle God in that. That's my experience. You know, I don't, I don't cuss. And I remember early in my career, I would have to do things. I worked on a show where I, you know, there was cussing in it. And I was never good. I would say to the directors, I would go, I'm not good at this. It doesn't, my acting actually isn't that good in this because I'm just not, I'm not good at it. Well, a lot of my friends, a lot of my Christian friends cuss, like swear like sailors. I don't because it's just, it's just not, well, you know, it's a biblical thing. Not, not to. Paul talks about it. Says, don't just, just don't do it, man. It just doesn't help you. And it's a process. I have friends that have like gotten off of swearing, <laughs> you know, gotten off of smoking, gotten off of being addicted to video games. Video games are very addictive. So you make that decision to change. You make a decision to stop doing something, whatever it is. So I'm talking to all of you, not just Micah. And you present that to God and you say, God, I can't do this, but you can. And I'm putting my faith and trust in you and trusting that the Holy Spirit that lives in me through my acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, the Holy Spirit now lives in me. That's the way it works for all of us uh, wacky Christians. That's what we believe. That once we accepted Jesus, his spirit, what we call the Holy Spirit, or you may hear the Holy Ghost, the, the spirit of, of Christ and God lives within our souls, lives within our hearts and helps us to see things in a way that is the way God sees things and sees people. And that's why we love our enemies as, and love our neighbors and love God. Uh, and we, we turn the other cheek. We don't judge. We, if we have anger, we have righteous anger, as Jesus did when he turned over the tables in the, in the temple. But we also just trust that he is bigger than us and that he's got it. That's the beautiful thing about my life is I just put my faith and trust in him, not me. So Micah, put your faith and trust in God that he can deliver you from this addiction of smoking or the, the desire of smoking or to smoke or to vape. And let him do his work in that. Let him show you how he's going to work in that for you. And, know, and this is an important part. Know that it's okay if it takes time, all right? Just pray about it daily, 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 daily. Ask him and believe when you ask. So I'm going to pray. I know, this is all crazy James, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for Micah. And any of you that are believers listening to this, will you just join me in prayer for Micah, our, our, our brother in the fellowship? of the uh, Jat Fellowship. All right. This is how I pray as a Christian. For those of you that, again, are atheists or believe differently, um, I'm not pushing anything on you or trying to make you feel uncomfortable. Although, actually, feeling uncomfortable is a good thing. I know the world is trying to say it's not. It's a good thing to actually be out of our comfort zones. That's how we learn and grow. That's how we actually learn and grow. And that's how we know what we believe and why we believe it and all that. Remember, like we always talk about on the show, I'm just showing you how I, as a Christian, handle things. So hopefully that'll be enlightening to you. Again, no more than you want to know. Okay? No more than you want to know. In other words, go out of your comfort zones in places and be able to expose yourself to things that aren't your norm. That's what I do. Okay? So I'm going to pray for you, Micah. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I thank you for Micah. And I pray, Lord, that you would help him. I pray that you would come in and deliver him from these desires to smoke or vape. And the chemical reaction, the chemical addiction that his body has developed over time, to be addicted to this and, and making it harder to just function without it. So might you start a process in Micah, Lord, that would allow him to simply cleanse his system of the nicotine and the chemicals that come from smoking and vaping. 
Will you cleanse his system? Will you allow him to, you know, grab that glass of water and drink that water and take a sip of water every time he wants to go out and smoke or find something else to do or, or actually go to your word and grab a scripture, grab a, a psalm and find something. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, you know, or, or um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just find scriptures to say instead and get through the rough patches of stopping. And Lord, whatever way that that would be for him, maybe you'd say, well, okay, I need you to just go from a pack a day to, you know, I don't know how many cigarettes are in a pack, you know, two a day or one a day or, you know, and then two a week and then one a week and then a gradual change. Maybe it's a gradual, maybe it's a cold turkey. I don't know. Lord, however you want to speak to Micah, However you want to come in and, and relieve him of this. And Lord, I give this prayer to everybody that is listening, anybody that's having issues with smoking or vaping or other addictions in their lives, whether it be social media or video games or, you know, deeper than that, internet stuff. I pray you would help us all. Help us all to go to you when we're tempted to do things we don't want or we, that we know are no good for us. Will you help us, Lord? Will you help us? You've helped me in my life, so I know you will help us. You're a good and gracious God. You gave your son for us to have freedom in eternity after this life and to have peace in this life by your, by your grace, by knowing that you're such a good and peaceful God. So I thank you for that, and I, I pray for my brother Micah that you would help him and that you would release him from this. And I, I come against the works of the enemy that would try to whisper in his ear to say, you can't do this. Yes, you can, Micah, you can. You have a fellowship of people listening now. And now there's thousands of people that listen to this show. And, and it's going to be my guess that thousands of those people are, are hoping and praying for you. And that we're all hoping and praying for each other, for whatever it is we're all struggling with right now. Because like my daughter, I struggle with losing hope, God. Losing hope that our country is going to make it through this. And I pray you would show people the severity of what's going on out there. And I pray you would show everybody, including Micah, the severity of a life that continues in doing things that are dangerous for us. Not as a guilt thing, but just as a realistic thing that goes, oh yeah, I don't need to do this. I need to be there for my kids. He needs to be there for his three-year-old son. Will you bless Micah's three-year-old son? Will you bless his son? So that someday he can come back and listen to this and go, oh yeah, that was part of it. I'm not taking any credit, Lord, but Jat helped my dad kick that habit. Now we go out and have a good time and without all the cigarettes and the vaping. So be with Micah, Lord. Be with each and every person that is listening to this show. Everybody under the sound of my voice. Be with them and bless them this day. I know this may be a weird episode for some people going like, boy, James Arnold Taylor's a wacky Christian, man. He's praying to Jesus and asking God to help him. And Lord, this is who I am. And I can't not be who I am. And I hope that that doesn't make anybody want to cancel me or, or be upset with me. We're all just human beings. Actors are actors. They're not invincible. Celebrities aren't either. We're all fallible. We're all just humans trying to make it through this. So will you help us make it through this time? And I ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's how I pray. I go on a long time. Well, I don't always go on that long. I'm praying for you, Micah. I'm praying that you get released from this. And I know you will. I know you will. Okay? So state that and believe that now. You know that you will. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. If God is for us, who can be against us? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you got this, Micah. You got this, man. You got this. All right? God's going to reveal to you the best way to get off of the smoking and the vaping. 
don't beat yourself up if you slip and fall or if you if you don't do it instantly okay take your time do what you got to do and know that God will restore your health okay as you get healthier and 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 stop all of that and put in healthier things drinking good water eating good foods being being there in that way those things will come in and replenish your body and help relieve the damage that you know smoking or vaping has done you can get through it it's a rough patch look i i got off caffeine years ago i don't really do caffeine and and it it was hard and i had migraine headaches for a couple of weeks and i you know all of that but i i did it i got off of it and we, we, we all can do these things. At this point in time in our lives, this is a great opportunity for all of us to be looking at those things like Micah's doing. What can I, what can I do in my life right now that'll help me go farther and, and be better prepared for life and stuff? Because, because we got a lot of time right now, right? I don't like how the world has changed. I'm with my daughter. I don't like the thought of having to wear masks forever. Look, I, I know there's a big old thing on the mask argument. And I wear a mask when I go out because that's what you're supposed to do. I do. I follow the rules. I do what the rules say. But I got to be honest with you, as somebody that has had uh, issues with, you know, lung stuff and sensitivity to chemicals and all that, breathing your own carbon dioxide all day in a mask is is not good for you. It is it's not good for your brain and it's not good for you. So uh, I hope we can come up with solutions outside of just masks and six feet apart from each other. I hope nobody attacks me for saying that because that's a reasonable comment. That is not me saying I'm against it. That's me saying we need to start looking now for more reasonable solutions as we move forward as a society. So it's my prayer that we're able to get past this. It's my prayer that our country is able to heal. I got so much I want to say and I can't. It's my prayer that someday I actually can say everything I want to say to you all and that maybe, just maybe, someday I can actually play you all the episodes that I've recorded. But I can't right now. It's too volatile of a time and people will misunderstand. But I thank you all for listening to the show. Mr. Announcer Guy, give us that legal mumbo jumbo. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumi Go Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved. Thanks, dude. You got it, man. Hey, everybody. I don't know when I'll be back with another episode. We're closing in on the 50th episode of this uh, podcast. And I do have to be honest, I'm not on social media really much at all anymore now. I'm not making any new videos uh, on my YouTube right now, except for the podcast when it comes out time to time. And I'm sad about all of that. But um, seek the truth, everybody. Seek the truth in your lives. Even if the truth isn't what you're feeling or wanting to feel or wanting to hear, seek the truth. Be mindful of who's trying to fill your brain with what. Cling to your family. Talk about issues. There's ways to talk and debate things without screaming and yelling, without turning to hate. Hate is a killer. There is no good in hate. And people using hate because of their hatred for somebody else that's going to get us nowhere. It's going to get us nowhere. Jesus said, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. God bless you all. And thanks for listening. <laughs>